But I went to see Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yes. Uh, so I went to see this on day one. Uh, this obviously this is the the follow up to Black Panther. For the listeners, there'll be no spoilers on on the yeah, big game yeah. and on this. Yeah, there'll be no no spoilers in this. Just my thoughts. Uh, so yeah, this obviously follows on from after the tragic death of Chadwick Boseman, and we didn't know whether at the time whether we'd get a, a Black Panther sequel, whether they were going to recast him, or what they were going to do. But they decided to go ahead with with this film, and it kind it kind of takes place in the aftermath of King T'Challa's death. It starts off with King T'Challa. It has got his. He basically has a disease and it's incurable and he and he dies. And we're up the opening of the film, as you'd expect, is obviously a big funeral procession and tribute to, to Chadwick and to T'Challa. And it's a really, really beautiful opening. Hmm. Like the opening to this film and the the, the Marvel cr- you know when they do the opening with the, the um all the characters and stuff that come up. Yeah. It goes Marvel Studios. They do that and it's what they do for that for this time is just it's really beautiful it literally hits you like straight away with this but uh, the film itself it's we're now following uh, Shuri and uh, Queen Ramonda in the aftermath of T'Challa's death and at the end if you remember at the end of Black Panther T'Challa kind of promised the world up he opened up Wakanda and their resources and their technology and their health benefits to the world Obviously, yep. since then, we've had Infinity War, Endgame, what, what happened with Thanos and stuff. And because of his death, this hasn't happened. And the rest of the world is getting a bit angsty about it. They're worried at Wakanda being the biggest superpower in the world, as you know, the likes of the US and the Fran- French. and the But UK. they're isolated, aren't they, from everything? Because they're not getting it. They think that they're under threat from Wakanda. And it, what basically happened, conspires is that they have tried to find a way to get vibranium elsewhere. And in doing so, they have found it, but they've undone it by locating Neymar's kingdom. Oh, the Submariner. Yes. And this sets off a chain of events where Neymar is basically goes to Wakanda and says, we are the t- two most powerful nations in in the world. We have all these resources. People want it. We should team up. Yeah, yeah. And shit ensues. Like hijinks. Like f- hijinks ensue. <laughs> so this film has done a. Re- it's a real. It's a proper ensemble piece. This. So the likes of Shuri, uh, Nakia, and Baku Okoye, Queen Ramonda. It's it's all about their stories and how they follow on from the death of. Death of T'Challa. It, it kind of focuses on Shuri, but it also sent. It also kind of has everything for the other characters as well. Uh, Queen Ramonda, Angela Bassett in this, she is phenomenal. Like she gets a lot more to do in this film, and she, and yeah, the word queen is quite apt <laughs> because she is so regal and powerful and just commanding in this film. She's absolutely brilliant, and Letitia Wright is excellent as well. Them two just absolutely phenomenal in this film. And then the rest of them, everyone else is everyone else is putting in a good performance, and you can tell it also feels like you know when when they're doing talking about T'Challa and they have got the funeral scene and other things, you can tell that it's not just acting. Mm-hmm. That there's real emotion there for Chadwick as well, and it really comes across on on screen. Um, and on the side of this, obviously, we also have uh, Riri Williams, uh, Iron Heart, her story is her introduction to the MCU. And also we have a bit of a side plot with Everett Ross and Val comes mm-hmm. into play as well. If you've watched Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and I think she's mentioned Hawkeye. Can't Black, remember. Black Widow as well. Black Widow, that's it, Black Widow. Yeah, so she comes up in that. She's going to have a bit of a something to do with like the Thunderbolts and all that yeah. further down the line. Uh, so there's a bit of an all side story with that going on. That's where the film falls down for me. Oh, the side stories involving them. He you didn't care for it. Did, didn't care for him. Didn't need it. Took him out of the film. It would be this, exactly the same film, but all it's done is extend the lead time. This film is two hours and forty minutes long. It feels too long. I have often said to myself, if a film is long and it warrants it, doesn't bother me. I'm not. I'm, I'm not bothered. Doesn't bother me for films long. I'm quite happy to watch a long film. But I did find myself drifting away from at this 
When you're in cinema parts. and you look at your watch and stuff and you think, yeah, I, I looked at the time <laughs> a few times. There was a few yeah. times where I just thought this is dragging a bit. We we didn't need all this. Uh, I really liked Riri Williams, but uh, it, it is Riri Williams, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it just wasn't needed. Like it, it, it's it's just again like these are planting seeds for MCU TV shows. Yes. I don't think this was a film we needed that. No. If this was a film that we need it needed to be cathartic and and you needed a release after Chadwick's death. It needed to be something to celebrate that and to also move forward. Yeah. And it does that in spades in other areas, but it also kind of just dra- makes the film drag because of these. So you could have just taken them out and I'd have been happy with the film and it would have reduced the time by about half an hour as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, and Namor, Namor, however you want to pronounce it. Namor. They, they pronounce it Namor. Some, it's literally pronounced twi- different ways in the film. Submariner, just call him that. Yeah. <laughs> he is played by a newcomer to the MCU, uh, Tenok Huerta. Huer- yeah. Uh, he's really good. Um, he's, he's really good. He looks great. Like everything looks great in this film. All like all the set designs, all the costumes, all that stuff. You know, the, the, the kind of stuff that you saw in the first Black Panther. All of that kind of it looks stunning. Um, and but he's also a bit eh. Like he's yeah. really good, but the character is. It's not special. He's just an overpowered kind of mutant. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it, there's not. He was always he's, he was always Marvel's Aquaman anyway. You just they just made him for that. Yeah, and he is, um, you know, you got. A, he has uh, now it, it, he's kind of representing the Latino uh, community in this film, which yep. is great. I mean, that's wonderful. That's what Black Panther has done for, for uh, for their community, and for now he's got this representation in that, and that's really great to celebrate that. And these films have been really good at bringing that to the forefront. Yep. But as a character, he was just a bit. Uh, he's just mad at someone, so let's fight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I just didn't. He, he wasn't as good. He didn't have the nuance of like Killmonger. I love Killmonger. Yeah, genuinely. Killmonger, Killmonger genuinely, I don't. Th- I don't feel like he were a baddie. That's what I mean, I love he does. About some him. Bad, he, he does some bad things, but he, hey, we've all killed a spider, mate. But you do. You kind of understand where he comes from. Like he, his plight comes from colonization and and being left, subjugation. Yeah, and being like kind of left by Wakanda to. Yeah. Fend for himself after you know spoilers for this film because of what they do to his dad like it yeah it, he kind of get that Namor's just kind of pissy because someone found his kingdom <laughs> fucking hell <Yeah. laughs> he's a xenophobe <laughs> yeah it's a bit mm. of a drop in pathos there isn't it yeah a little bit a little exactly bit. And, and he's a bit pissy because you know Wakanda you know won't help it's it's like I'm taking my ball home. Yeah, it's a bit of that. And, and, and they do do a good job of showing how strong he is and how strong he's, you know, his kingdom is. And when they do go to there as well, it looks stunning. And like, excellent. Wait, well, you find out that Submariner don't, ha- Submariner don't have to breathe in space and he can swim in space. <laughs> oh, he does come as well with his uh, ankle wings. So he does have Does he? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Which mm. look really stupid, but then when you yeah. see that when he actually fights and uses them, it's he like... Leaps up, uh, he uses them as platforms, doesn't he? Yeah. It looks great. But when he's just stood there and they're just going, yeah, as he's like yeah. floating around in the air, like it, it looks a bit dumb. But, mm. but yeah, uh, I think it's not as good as the first one. It's a solid three out of five. Um, it's a good ending to the phase. It's def- it's the second best film of the phase, but that's not really saying much this time. <laughs> There's around. only two good films. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> will I? Wa- I, I wouldn't rush to watch it again. I may watch it again down the line. But like I said, everyone's does a really wonderful job. It, it really does pay tribute to Chadwick a, a few times in the film. And the ending to the film is really beautiful. Like, mm. absolutely stunning. And this isn't a spoiler of what happens, but I'm just going to let you know now, you don't need to stay to the end. There is no post-credit. Good. If it's it, two, two hours, 40 minutes, good. No, but there's no... You know now Marvel's uh, MO is... Mid-credit is set up for the next stuff. Yep. End credit is a funny thing. The yep. way this film ends, you, no funny. You don't need it. It's yep. just... And oh. the mid-credits scene is just... It doesn't set anything up. Anyone yep. who has complaints about all that it, all they do is it's a big, long trailer for the next film. It doesn't set anything up. There is a mid-credits scene, but it is just 
Yeah, it's really good. And so, yeah, the I have my issues with it. I enjoyed it, but um, yeah, fortunately, it wasn't what I was thinking after that first trailer. It just, I just thought that that that, that first trailer I thought was excellent, and it looked like something new and different. But then it starts to fall into a few different MCU tropes, and it just couldn't pull itself out of that. Even let's with all the Let's have a reset stuff. on next phase. Let's have a reset. Yeah. Mm. So enjoyable enough, but I'm guessing if you're not really that ass, I would just wait for it to come to Disney Plus in about three months. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs>